Today we travel through donut time. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning. How many, I know you're into this, how many donuts do you think are in the world right now? Hmm, well, there's at least a, a dozen per person, so I mean, maybe a hundred billion, but if you include donuts, when I'm talking about the kind of donuts that good old boys do in the Bojangles parking lot, that's another 15 to 20 billion, so 120 billion donuts in the world <laughs> right now. Okay, sounds like a good guess. I'll say 120 billion in one. Oh, okay. Donuts have been around since the early 1800s, but history's best donut creations have come actually in the last 100 years. Yeah. I think there's a strong argument for that, which we will explore today as we learn about them together while scooting donuts down a board. It's time for the Shuffleboard Game Donut Edition. Welcome to the Shuffleboard Game Zone. Yeah, we're gonna be tasting specific, iconic donut styles from some of the world's most popular donut or baked goods brands and trying to guess which decade those donuts that those brands specifically were first sold. As always, whoever lands closest to the correct decade wins the round and gets a point, and the winner in the end will receive a special message spelled out in donuts. I love special messages spelled out in donuts. Oh, look here. Oh, sorry. Swarry. What is this? This is a Boston cream. Is that what's happening here? Look at that. Look at that nice custard in the chocolate under the chocolate roof. From where is it from? Duncan? Yep. Oh, I can tell you right now. That's good. I'm going to need a napkin before this is over. Mm. You won last time we shuffled. Uh, I've been that means I go since. first. So you get to go first to give me at least a little bit of an advantage. Okay, so again, mm. I'm not trying to guess when a Boston cream donut in general was invented. I'm trying to guess when Dunkin' Donuts specifically introduced the Boston cream donut. Donuts feel like a 50, 40, 50, 40s thing. 40, 50, 30, 40, 40. And, he, and I think the first decade or so, they're just spurting out regular old donuts. And then somebody's like, let's put chocolate on them. That happens in decade two. That happens in the 50s. And then someone's like, oh, we got this new machine. It's the 60s. Everybody's thinking about going to the moon. Let's put cream inside of it. <laughs> That's how I decided 60s. Hmm. Cream is not custard though. Oh, uh, he's going for 60 and he overshot it. 1980. Oh man. Yeah, that, that whole moon talk. Gotcha. I'm gonna, I'm gonna steal your answer and your position for 1960. Whoops. Okay, that's your only bump. All right, now hold on. That's your one bump. You All just right, used fine. your bump. Fine. You used your bump. Now you can have unintentional bumps. But it's you... only round one, folks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back in 1948, William Rosenberg first opened a pastry shop called Open Kettle but Bro. changed the shop's name to Dunkin' Donuts in 1950. Right, okay. Dunkin' has offered some form of the Boston cream donut since the 1950s. Oh, wow, okay. All the way since the beginning. So you're in the 50s, you win the round, but you've used your bump, oh, dump. Man. Okay. Another donut, another day. This is a donut. <laughs> what? Mm. A donut. What? A donut. What? From Little Debbie. My mama used to have these. Now, you're a Little Debbie man. Did you have these? I never had a donut stick. Because you thought they were too dry? They're really good to dip in milk. Which brings us to the exercise that we're performing today. I'm winning, which means I go first. I no. never knew these existed. They're so Because good. they might be a fresh new thing. Well, Stevie told us that they changed their name to Dunkin' Donuts right. because they're actually dunking a donut. And then yep. once they realized that the donut doesn't dunk that well, they came up with the stick in 1960. That's right, that's right, Link. 1960. Stop, 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 stop! You might be right, but you're, okay. the thing you're wrong about is these are from Little Debbie, and you went with Dunkin' Donuts, and you kept talking about Dunkin' Donuts. And... I know I was talking about Dunkin', I was just saying the existence of a donut stick. Okay, now I remember eating these in the 80s. That would lead me to believe that it's the 60s is a pretty good guess, 70s is a pretty good guess. I also have my bump, though. 
I'm going to try to get you moving back to the back, and I'm going to try to sort of divert myself into the 70s. Here we go. Oh, what? What? what was that? What? Hold on. What? Hold on. Uh, that was two hits. What? You shuffled and then hit. Well, you know what it is? What? That's just crazy. Uh, our ramp is, is it's kind of elevated, and so it started get, get, got away from me, and I couldn't hold on to it. I'm fine with it because I like the result. Get the measuring tape ready. <sighs> okay. Little Debbie Donut Sticks were originally called Dunkum Sticks, and though the Little Debbie brand started way back in the late 1950s, Little Debbie Dunkum Sticks weren't introduced until 1983. Ah. Oh, dang. Okay. <sighs> well, I used my bump and it didn't help. <laughs> yeah, we're now bumpless and I'm still winning. All right, before we do this next round, we would like to introduce the first Mythical Society quarterly collectible item of the year. This is the Rhett and Link through the Snackiverse lunchbox. It's vintage. This is basically an homage to our alternate universe snack taste test. You know, we've got some of it the- It shows the journeys that we go on uh, with a totally not sticker, but it, what's it called? Totally not sticker. I'm gonna call this uh, like- Painted. It's painted. painted. It's built into the metal. metal. It's painted. Metal lunchbox. And look, and then as you can see, when we go into the, we don't tell you this kind of thing, but we're telling you now, when we go into these parallel universes, we go in this little time machine right here, and that's the thermos that comes with this thing. Check out, check out the time machine. You can drink out of it. Uh, there's me, and there's Red. Okay, and now listen. Sip. You gotta be a Mythical Society third degree member in order to do this. You gotta join by January 31st if you wanna join third degree monthly, or if you wanna wait a little bit, think about it, you can wait until March 31st uh, and join third degree quarterly or annual before then in order to qualify. Mythicalsociety.com for all the details. Let's taste a donut. Okay. Oh, the classic. Here we go, just a nice, and this is like hot now glaze. Krispy Kreme is a different, it's a Kreme. different company. <laughs> mm. I'm still winning. Let's mm. see if that continues. Man, man, they got that so right when they did it the first time. But when did they do it? I mean, it has to be with the the invention of Krispy Kreme. I would think this is the first thing they did. When did Krispy Kreme start? Your guess is better than mine, but my guess is 1930. I'm gonna go on the 1920 side of it. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go right in between the trifecta. Don't go too hard. Stop, stop, yeah! Okay. I got some accuracy today. <laughs> <laughs> ah, ah. Okay, 30s, that's a good guess. And I can't bump, so I can only go for 20 or 40. I think 30s is a good guess, but 40 is my only other option. I gotta do this without, but now listen, here. Listen if, here. If I bump you unintentionally, because I wouldn't do it intentionally. Nope. You get to move your donut back to where it was, and then you get to place my donut on any decade that you please. So, so bump away. I got to get over here on the side of this thing. Big penalty for that. He's not bumped me. Ah, uh, feeling good. I mean, the with our bump rule, the. It seems like going first now becomes an advantage. Well, once you've used your bumps, it does become an advantage. Yep. I need to think about that. Krispy Kreme founder Vernon Rudolph originally sold his baked goods to grocery stores, but when Winston-Salem, North Carolina locals what, what? began smelling his donuts cooking in his bakery, he cut a hole in the wall to sell them directly to the people. The glazed donut is the original Krispy Kreme flavor, and it was first sold on July 13th, 1937. <laughs> boom, boom, yeah, yeah. Hey. I'm feeling it today, y'all. It's, you know, it's just magic. What have we here? Something too big for the cloche. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Donuts. Uh, this is the famous bacon maple donut. Oh, yeah. Could, we've, we've had this I think at the actual place. Okay, very trendy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the, to the center of this thing. All the way from Portland, and you can taste it. Mm -hmm. Me meaning, it, it was shipped. It's a bit old. Yeah, I'm still winning, Rep. Yeah, you're winning. Three Every round, I, I keep winning by more. But we just realized that once the bumps have been deployed, it doesn't make sense for the person in the lead to go 
first because then they can block you out. So now, once both, give the advantage. both bumps have been deployed, it switches and the guy losing goes first. So that's me. The guy losing. Ugh. May I submit 1920 for your consideration? But I feel like this is the kind of thing that has happened in the past 20 years. I'm not gonna overthink it much beyond that. So I'm gonna try to land on 2000. Oh, a nice bump. Brings him squarely okay. on 2000. All right. I agree with you, I think it's 2000. Now and you here's... can't hit it if you, it, I'm completely within the thing. So we can half a point, if you can get your donut to land completely within the year 2000 without touching my donut. Okay, so if I touch you, graze you, kiss you in any way, <laughs> bless you in any way, but not move you outside of 2000, I don't think that should be considered a bump. Okay, if, yeah, if you don't move me out of 2000, we'll just call that a graze. All right, I'm going for 2000. I don't know to what- To render you're... your shuffle I think inert. I'm I think I'm allergic to maple. <laughs> oh, bless you. Here we go. 2000 with just a little kiss. Oh, man, it's teetering. You know, it's a good I... roll. Voodoo Donut was created by friends and mu musicians Kenneth Cat Daddy Pogson and Trace Shannon after they noticed a real lack of donut shops in the Portland area. Now known for their extravagant and unconventional donut varieties like Captain Crunch, Bubblegum, and even Penis Shaped, they are perhaps best known for their Bacon Maple Bar, which was listed on the original Voodoo Donut menu back in... 2003. 2003! It's nice to be right, but still not win the round, but still be winning. <sighs> still winning. It all comes down to this donut. Oh. Intamins. Oh. oh, wow. These are the classic. Rich, frosted. What do they call it? It's probably written on the box. Uh, cake? Donut? Chocolate covered cake donut? They're called rich, frosted chocolate donuts, but I would call it a cake donut, yeah. Okay. Because of the bump rule, I'm going first. Now you can't win. I can't win. But I will make it interesting. If you state your guess and then bank off the back wall and land squarely in that guess and that guess is right, then you automatically win the game entirely. I'm trying to remember what we've guessed now. 30, 50, 80, 2000. Okay, then my it's guess, has, my guess has to be the 40s. Boy, if I pull this off and I'm right. I will say if 70% of your donut is within 1940, I will accept it so after I, banking it. After bank, I mean, that's, I, a big that's a big bank. I've never come this high with a bank. I don't even bank. know if that's possible. It might be physically impossible. I don't even think Hey, but we put people possible. on the moon. Right. In the 60s, which is not my guess. Okay. Lordy, see we go. You're gonna have to slam a jamma. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> you, you proved, first of all, he proved that it could have been done. Dang it! But he did not do it. Did you see how much air that thing got? And it really came back. You know, that just kind of makes me want to do like a, a haphazard bank here. You, you should do it. I think this is the 60s. This is just for pride here. I'm just going to bank that crap out of this thing for 1960. Don't hit mine though. I ain't going to hit yours. <laughs> <laughs> so if you consider that a bump, you would move me somewhere else, but it wouldn't be. I'm, I'm, ha I'm happy with where you're it at. Would actually have to, yeah, it would actually have to in, improve my ability to win the round. Intamin's Bakery was founded by German immigrant William Intamin in Brooklyn in 1898. What? But the company didn't begin selling donuts until much later. These rich frosted chocolate donuts have remained one of Intamin's best-selling products ever since they were first introduced in... The 1970s. Whoa, 1970s? Dang. All right, Link, you won fair and square. Congratulations. What is my message? Uh, Thongs retract. Well, we had to, We see, we got them to say congrats, Rhett, because we just thought, you know. Oh. And then we had to rearrange them. So thongs but. retract is congrats, Rhett, rearranged? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know I could be thongs retract. If you'd have just told me- I feel like a winner. <laughs> that it was a fun thing to say, and I would have been happy right now. All right, congrats, Link. Thanks for subscribing and clicking that bell. You know what? What? You know what? <laughs> <laughs>
You, why don't, why don't you always... Have... <coughs> Gosh, I'm still sneezing. I'm Bless you. I was trying not to sneeze. Why don't you let your thong retract? <sighs> you know what time it is. Hi, I'm Kelly Christmas, and I'm in the bridge of nowhere over Swanee River, Florida. And it's time to spin the Wheel of Mythicality. What a spin. Okay. Click the top link to watch us try to guess what donut flavors we combined in Good Mythical More. And what their names are. And to find out where the Will of Mythicality is gonna land. Get the Mythical Snackiverse lunchbox and thermos collectible set by joining the Mythical Society Third Degree Monthly by January 31st or Third Degree Quarterly or Annual Plan by March 31st.